Okay, hello everyone. This year I will speak about um, finding the location of a transmitter using the TDOA technique. In the talk I will first present some basics on the TDOA localization technique and then I will show some simple experimental system consisting of three RTL-SDR receivers um, to actually perform localization of signals in the city. So what is the basic idea? So TDOA means time difference of arrival, also called multilateration. And the idea is to use several receivers. I've shown here, so we have a transmitter here and several receivers. And you analyze the time difference of the received signals. So the transmitter sends a signal and due to the different distance to the receiver, there will be a delay in arrival. And that's exactly what TDOA analyzes to determine the position of the transmitter. So we are not talking about absolute times of arrival here, but it's always about this, di uh, about this difference of times between the, between the receivers. And finally, you can apply some geometry to determine the position then of the transmitter. So to get a better understanding, we start with a very simple example with only two receivers, one here and one here. And let's assume you have the following situation. The signal arrives at both receivers at the same time. So that means the TDOA here would be zero seconds. And the statement you can gain from that is that the transmitter must, must have an equal distance to both of the receivers. And um, so it must be somewhere uh, right in between, in the middle of both. And if you plot all positions that obey to this statement, you come up with this straight line here. So the transmitter here must be located somewhere on this line. It's not a very unique localization, but it's a first step. So what happens if the TDOA is not zero? So in this case, it's uh, 6.7 microseconds. You can also calculate a distance from it by multiplying it with the speed of light. So here we have then 2,000 meters. And now the statement is that the transmitter is 2,000 meters closer to receiver 1 than to receiver 2. And if you now plot all possible positions, you come up with this shape, which is a hyperbola that can be mathematically shown. And in the focal point, you can find the receiver. A TDOA can also be negative, so in this case the signal arrives first at the second receiver and then at the first, so the transmitter must be located more towards the second receiver. And you get a hyperbola which has this shape and it's bended more towards receiver two. To uh, get a unique, local, um, unique position of the transmitter, you need a third receiver. And what you do here is you uh, generate a hyperbola for each receiver pair. So there is one hyperbola for receiver one and two, and this one is for one and three, and there's also a third one. And the, in the ideal case, they intersect at one unique position, and that's exactly the transmitter's location. One important thing here is that the uh, receivers must be synchronized in time. Okay, let's talk about how the delay between the signals is actually measured. And uh, what I used here is the correlation function. The correlation function is this simple formula here. We have two signals. The signal that is received by um, receiver one and the signal that is received by receiver two. Both signals are multiplied and integrated to get um, like a measure of similarity between the two signals. And what, what is important here is the shift. So we try these, uh, we calculate this measurement of similarity for every possible delay. There is also a small example here with two rectangular signals. You multiply it and you add up all the samples and uh, one of the signals is shifted. So you end up with a correlation function looking like this. And when there is a peak in the correlation function, you can read out the delay between the two signals because at this delay, the uh, two signals matches um, best. So um, here is uh, some kind of resolution analysis for localization on a map. 
Um, the reason for this is that the delay measurement or the distance that is related to the delay measurement is not equal to the resolution um, on a map. Here I have hyperbolas and uh, I have assumed here a resolution, possible resolution of 600 meters. So the distance between every hyperbola is the TDOA of 600 meters. And you can see right between the receivers, the um, accuracy is even higher here, 300 meters. And if you move outside the, uh, the area between the receivers, you get even a very, very bad resolution here of maybe uh, even a few kilometers. And this is a general rule with TDOA. You always good, uh, get good accuracy right in an area that is surrounded by the receivers here and the accuracy is getting very bad if you are, let's say, behind a receiver. Okay, let's go to a first uh, summary. So uh, TDOA analyzes the time difference of signals arriving at different receivers. We require three synchronized receivers. The delay measurement is done with a correlation function and for good accuracy, um, the transmitter should be located in the area between the receivers. So next is time for the praxis and we will see how to build a real system and consider every important aspect here. So the receiver placement, synchronization and also the connection. I will talk about signal processing and present some uh, results in the end. So the goal of this very simple system was to locate uh, signals in the city of Kaiserslautern, where I live, um, with a very simple system consisting of a uh, Raspberry Pi and an RTL stick. I'm using a very simple antenna. The antenna is placed indoor, so mostly we have non line of sight, which is not optimal, but it was the easiest way to do it. The frequency um, should be the same in all of the in all of the receivers, so I'm using a tool called Calibrate RTL, which uses the uh, GSM channels to, um, to get this exactly the same reception frequency in every receiver. And I also want to mention that it's important to use one of the newer versions of the RTL SDR because here the frequency stability is much better than in the early versions. So the RTL SDR is a simple but a very nice receiver because it can receive signals in a very wide band from below 100 megahertz to above one gigahertz in an instantaneous band with two megahertz. And um, regarding the resolution of delay measurement, the SDR is sampling with two megahertz that corresponds to a period of 500 nanoseconds and the distance you can measure here is 150 meters. But keep in mind, this is not the resolution on the map, it's only the resolution in the delay measurement. Okay, here we have a map of the city, Kaiserslautern. It's located in the southwest of Germany, approximately 100,000 inhabitants, and Google has already marked the main point of interest here, the university, the soccer stadium, and the main cemetery. So um, the red, red markers here are the uh, receiver places. In the ideal case, you should, should place the receiver somewhere here or somewhere here, but unfortunately this is all forest and it's really uh, getting hard to uh, set up a receiver here with a fast internet connection. So I came up with this suboptimal placement and at least in the area here, um, the accuracy should be uh, quite good. The receivers are connected um, to a master PC uh, via internet connection, DSL connection. So the system works as follows. The master triggers a reception at the receivers. They receive some portion of data and then they send the data back to the master. One thing that has to be considered here is that quite high data rates are occurring. So the RTL SDR um, has at its output 8-bit IQ data sampled with 2 megahertz. So in total the data rate here is 32 megabit per second. 
So the available DSL upload we had was only one megabit. So if you record just one second, it takes approximately half a minute to copy the data back. So this is uh, far away from uh, uh, real-time processing. Next topic is synchronization of the receivers. So for synchronization, I use a DAB transmitter that is located in the city right here, and it's placed on a high mast, mast and it has a, uh, it's a high power transmitter, gives excellent correlation. So this is very good for synchronization because this transmitter can be received all over the city, so by every receiver. So how does it work in detail? Each receiver first um, receives some portion of the DAB plus signal, then it switches its frequency to the unknown transmitter. And if you like, you can switch back again to check if the synchronization worked. So um, the receiver start reception roughly at the same time, and afterwards, the signals are aligned along the reference part here. Right? And you also have to, account, uh, have to take into account here the known delay from the reference transmitter to the receivers. So what I'm doing is not actually uh, synchronizing the receivers, but I synchronize the signals they have received. One very important thing here is that it's possible to switch the frequency during reception seamlessly. So there shouldn't be any single sample lost, otherwise you will, you will lose synchronization. The question is, is it possible with the RTL-SDR? So I took the standard library um, and modified it so that it switches the frequency during reception um, and it crashed, so it didn't work. But there is a solution. I found a, a branch of the, RT, uh, of the lib RTL-SDR which is called async rearrangement. I'm not 100% sure what they are doing. It's something to do with USB and callback functions, but in the end it worked perfectly fine. So I could reprogram this library such that it, uh, that it changes the frequency during reception and not, not a single sample is lost. So this is very fine. Okay, I have talked about correlation before to measure the delay. Um, now I have depicted two real-world signals and, its, uh, and their correlation. So the first one is a, a DAB plus signal and you can see there's a distinct peak here and you can also identify a single sample that, that corresponds to the peak. So this is very nice. You can very precisely measure delay. Um, but here we have an FM signal, broadcast signal, and you can see that there are a lot of different peaks and also the peak is not quite distinct, so we have a lot of noise here. And in general, the quality of the correlation depends on many different factors, on noise, on the signal length, on signal bandwidth, also on maybe multipath uh, propagation. And it's also depending on the signal content, especially for FM. Um, yeah. What can we do about it? So first of all, if you have such a correlation, we can use s actually a smoothing here, using a moving average to smooth out um, this noise here. So that's very easy. What about all these distinct uh, peaks here? Any one of them could be the true delay. But the goal here is to analyze the, the x-axis here, the delay. And if you compare two peaks here, the delay is uh, approximately 60,000 samples, which corresponds to a distance of over 9,000 kilometers. But the maximum possible TDOA in distance is the distance between the receivers. So in my case, it was just a few kilometers. So it's, um, it's easy to see that the peak here in the middle, which is close to zero delay, this is the right one and all the others can be discarded. So the overall signal processing is done using a MATLAB script and it considers always the receptions pairwise to create a hyperbola. So first the signals are received, are sent to a master. Then the signals are synchronized 
using a correlation on the DAB reference signal. I discard invalid peaks and use then the measured delay to synchronize the receptions. Then I measure the unknown signals, which is basically the same procedure, but now for the, for the unknown transmitter signal. And I create a hyperbola using geometry and finally write it into an HTML JavaScript file to display the results in Google Maps. You may have realized that I also have written something about interpolation. In theory, it's possible to incre increase the resolution of the receptions by doing some interpolation, but in, uh, in the praxis it showed uh, no improvement, so maybe other factors are here important. So let's go to the results. Um, the first signal I have analyzed was in the 70 centimeter band, a DMR repeater of the University of Kaiserslautern. And you can see here the three hyperbolas. And in this case, they intersect in two points, so there are two possible locations, but they are not so far away from each other. If you consider here the scale, so it's only 200 meters. The true position is here. It's located here on this uh, building at the university, and the localization here comes quite close to the actual transmitter's position. The second signal I've analyzed is, uh, was a signal on 922 megahertz, so probably this is mobile telephony, GSM, UMTS, or LTE, I don't know exactly. Um, the hyperbolas intersect again in a, a, a very nice manner uh, at exactly one point. And I have marked all the base stations in the city, and it really looks like that there are signals coming from this uh, base station here nearby. The next signal is an FM broadcasting signal at uh, 97 megahertz. Um, it's a broadcast station antenna Kaiserslautern and it's located uh, right here. So here you can see that the localization here uh, is becoming difficult. You see the transmitter must be located somewhere here in this area. Um, but the reason for this is that the accuracy, a good accuracy, you can get only between the receiver, so in this area. And this transmitter here is located far outside, and this uh, shows that it's really difficult to localize um, transmitters they, uh, that lie a little bit outside. But at least you can have some direction finding method here. So you can say that the, that the transmitter must be located somewhere in this direction. So now I have a, a next signal is uh, on 391 megahertz. Um, I have no idea what it is. It's band with uh, approximately 15 kilohertz, and um, the hyperbolas intersect here at this position. Uh, there is a post office or a train station, but I'm not really sure what this signal is. But at least I could localize it. Okay, that brings me to the end. So. I've shown a si very simple experimental TDOA system that can be built with little effort using very cheap RTL SDR receivers. And um, I think the results are quite remarkable if you consider the suboptimal setup with this very simple antenna placed indoor and with this very simple um, SDR receiver. So thank you.